In dreaming, people are often creative. They have lots of interesting ideas. And then there's no strong driving stimulus to corral up the connections. In schizophrenia, people like R.D. Lang claim that schizophrenics are very creative. And there you have a neurochemical malfunction that impairs the connections between brain cells. And finally, people on drugs will often claim they're creative. And notice I'm using the word claim in each case. <laughs> claim they're creative, and that, as we've seen, is because you impair the connectivity between one brain cell and another. Now, I'm not saying that any of these five states are similar, but they have something in common, which is in all cases, they are smaller networks than the standard adult mind or brain in terms of the connections and how they're working. Could it be, therefore, that in some way this is something to do with creativity? Could creativity be somehow something to do with having small networks? Not necessarily caused by schizophrenia or drugs, but just being able to have them. Could that be examples of it? Well, we know that not all ravers are creative. Not all creative people take drugs, nor they're mentally ill. Um, and smaller networks, therefore, we must think of them as how you would trigger them, just using that as a, as a necessary but not sufficient condition. Because when you think about it, and I really feel nervous here talking to creative people or I'm not myself, surely the whole point is to be able to deconstruct initially. So as a scientist, I know you have to challenge dogma. You have to challenge connections and assumptions that are made and pairings that are made. And I think that when you paint, which is why I can't do it, what you're having to do is, if I'm deconstructing that white column, which I see as a, as a, as a pillar, you, you artists here would see it in shades and textures of light, I imagine, whereas I can't do that. I see it functionally as a, as a pillar. Um, so I imagine the first thing is going to do that, to be able to deconstruct in some way. Now, you then have to bring together unusual pairings. And this is courtesy of someone called Phoebe Collins, daughter of a postdoc of mine, painted age four. This is created, surely, because she's seen the world in a new way. Not only is she deconstructed, she's now got a sheep with a turquoise tail and a purple head. Yeah? Isn't this creative? And why is that not hanging where this is hanging? Her sheep. What's the difference? More creative. This is a boring sheep. It's white, same as all sheep are. Why is Phoebe's sheep not as good as her sheep? Yeah? What's the difference? Okay? And I think the difference is, I'm nervous with the experts, I think this is the difference. Phoebe has complied, as her says, with the first two criteria. First, you challenge, you deconstruct, you have the small network, you challenge dogma, and then you do something unusual. Both have done this. But he, Hurst, actually fulfills the third, to my mind, the third all-important criteria, which, which Fieber does not, and that it must give you a new insight, a new way of seeing the world, which, let's be honest, this does not. <laughs> so, does, yeah. so my suggestion <coughs> is that for the small uh, networks, you have, first of all, a premium on deconstructing back to the abstract, back to the raw sensation. You then bring together unusual or idiosyncratic associations. Both of those did that. But thirdly, these new associations must activate extensive connections in your brain and on people's brains. That is to say, you suddenly say, aha, now I understand. I understand, remember, as seeing one thing in terms of something else. Now I understand. Now I see the connection. Yeah? Whether it's visual or auditory, or in my case, scientific. Yeah? So this is the crucial third step, which is why people on drugs or schizophrenics rambling novel neologisms or painting bizarre paintings are not necessarily creative in that sense, I would suggest. So creativity, I'm suggesting, is an abnormally small neuronal network that triggers a new insight, a eureka moment in yourself and others. And I think, therefore, that it's the apotheosis of the individual, and indeed, the fourth alternative that enables you to be both fulfilled and an individual. Thank you very much.